And so it's a preventative care thing. There's a lot of difference between healthcare and sick care. And when you are trying to fix something like I'm sick, it's hard to fix. It takes time, it takes healing, but to prevent something, it's very easy with minimal effort. I'm joined today by Dr. Chris Cooper, a Portland-based chiropractor who specializes in Atlas Orthogonal Upper Cervical Therapy. Don't worry, he's gonna explain exactly what that means. We talk about the importance of sleep, hydration, movement, and mindfulness, and how to get back on track when maybe you've lost your way. And of course, we chat a little bit about TikTok, where Dr. Cooper has over 400,000 followers. All right, let's get into it. Well, Dr. Chris Cooper. Hey. Welcome <laughs> to the self-care mission. Thanks so much for joining me here. Of course. So, of all places, we kind of met on TikTok. Oh, yeah. What a strange and wonderful ride that's been. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It hasn't even been a year that's since crazy. I joined. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I only really invest, started personally investing time in it in uh, the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's when I kind of, you got you got a, a head start on it. Yeah. I yeah. started in October. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. Yeah. That's almost, yeah, almost a year. Almost a year. <laughs> <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> this is, this has been quite a year. Okay. So uh, you're a chiropractic physician. Yes. Here in Portland, Oregon with me. And... I'd like to start with getting a little lay of the land about you personally, as much as you're willing to share. How do you show up for, for yourself? What does your personal self-care look like? What are the routines and things that help keep you healthy and on track? So what I've learned is I have to create some habits. I have to have rules for myself. If I don't create rules and habits for myself, I consistently don't show up for myself. And so part of my routine is having a consistent sleep schedule, meaning I go to bed the same time every night and I wake up the same time every day, no matter if I am working that day or not. You're a hero. <laughs> oh man. Like I, I know like it's, I did for a long time where like you, you know, you have your wake up time and sleep time, but then on the weekends you mess it all up. I found that if just keeping that consistency um, helps immensely. Sure, but surely there's times when you want to see, you stay up later than you normally would, and you yeah. You but I yeah. Tr I try not to. Yeah, I try not to. All I have like alarms and stuff set. <laughs> like go to bed, start getting ready for bed. Oh yeah. And so part of that is I I get ready for bed an hour early than my bedtime. Mm, yeah. Because of the screens and. You cut, you, do you cut screens off? I try. Yeah. And that one's really hard with TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, yeah. You're like, I got to check my TikTok. I know. So <laughs> that one's hard. But that's that's a big piece of the pie. But uh, other stuff is, you know, the self-care of getting massage and getting mm -hmm. chiropractic care. and yeah. Which you just got a massage. I did. TikTok. Yeah. I did. This, like, I try to get one every two weeks. Smart. Um, at the minimum, I try to get one every four weeks. Yeah. Sometimes it gets so busy, it's hard to fit it in. But I know myself, if I don't get it every two weeks, it's, and it's not so much that my muscles are like dying and hurting. Right. And like, oh, you need to fix me. I'm injured. But it, for wellness and yeah. mental health, it is yeah. so valuable to me. I just can't, I can't. I, I would argue that that's even the most of it. I would yeah. agree. Yeah. At least for me. I mean, there's some people who have legitimate injuries that oh, yeah. massage is really really helpful for healing but i think wellness is a huge part of health and healing and all that stuff yeah it always it does always feel like i mean and i'm sure you feel this too like an uphill battle convincing people that that they shouldn't just be coming in to quote unquote fix themselves you know get mm -hmm. fixed and then go on their merry way mm -hmm. yeah it's a, I always, it's a preventative care thing yeah there's a lot of difference between health care and sick care Yes. And when you are trying to fix something like I'm sick, it's hard to fix. It takes time. It takes mm -hmm. healing. But to prevent something, it's very easy with minimal effort. Yeah. So, okay. So sleep is a good, is a big cornerstone for you and your personal self-care. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. I find, so I've totally been blowing that one up 
for, for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> As most people. Yeah. Most people. But like when I do actually get to bed at the reasonable time and get the seven to eight that I know my body needs, I wake up the next day. I'm like fired up. I'm like yeah. everything else lines up better. Yep. I make better food choices. Yep. I get on the rowing machine. Yep. Like everything else lines up. Isn't that funny how that works? It's, it's just how ridiculous. I know. Yeah. It's, it's one of those choices that you have to consciously make. Mm hmm. Um, but when you make it, it just kind of sets everything in motion for a good, healthy day. Yeah. Well, it's it's something I've... I mean, the whole purpose of this project really is to examine this human condition mm -hmm. where we know what's good for us, but we still don't. Mm -hmm. do. Like drinking water is another good yes, example. Yes, that's another one. So the first thing I do when I wake up is drink eight ounces of water. Like yeah. before my feet touch the floor. I, I guzzle some water. Yeah. Oh, you just leave it by your bedside? I leave it by my bedside. I like that. So the first, because I ne would never do it otherwise. <laughs> and then do you do you also, um, does that set you up to drink water throughout the day? I have to convince myself. I'm still not excellent yeah. at drinking water throughout the day. Yeah. But that first morning one kind uh -huh. of gets everything going. Yeah. Yeah, and it's another one where like when you drink, I, and I don't like subscribe to any like, it's got to be eight. Yeah. Eight ounce glasses of water. Uh -huh. like, it's just like, <laughs> drink water if you're thirsty. Like, yeah. Your body you, knows. You know when you're not. Your body's smarter than you are. Yeah. Just listen. Yeah. And, just... and when you do, again, other things start to line up. Mm -hmm. You start to feel better. You mm -hmm. don't get like the, the afternoon crash is like, mm -hmm. why do we need to convince ourselves to do things know. that make us feel better? There's a lot of cool stuff though. I mean, like with the water stuff, but the sleeping thing as well. Um, most of your healing happens when you reach that deep sleep cycle. There's mm. different cycles of sleep. Yeah. The light, the REM where you're dreaming and deep sleep. And when you reach deep sleep, your body releases something called human growth hormone. Okay. And that's where you heal. Your, your body that has, you know, damage throughout the day, mm -hmm. whatever it is, that's when you start healing. And so if you never reach it, when are you going to heal? Right. And so you just always wake up and you're like, oh, I just feel like I slept six or seven hours, but I don't feel rested. Yes. Like you never, you, you never healed yourself last night. Yeah. It just yeah, goes like, slow. Last night I got to bed proper. I got like seven and a half hours of sleep and I was like 15 minutes before my alarm. I was like, bing, I'm like, I'm ready to go. Yep. See, that's like, a sign that you got everything your body needed. Yeah. But like every night before that, probably for the past yeah. two weeks, <laughs> <laughs> the alarm goes off and I'm like, oh, what gotta, happened get, to me? get up, get up, get up, <laughs> snooze, snooze, snooze. I'm like, oh, jeez. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So. Interesting stuff. Personal struggle. So, okay. So sleep and water is um, your top of your, top of your list. Having some sort of exercise program, whether it's even, like you said, rowing is fantastic. Yeah. Walking, running, any, anything to get your body moving. And it doesn't really matter even if it's like eight minutes or 10 minutes. I know yeah. the ideally is like 30 minutes of elevated heart rate a day, but mm. anything would be better than nothing. Right. And so it's something like that would be beneficial. Yeah. For me personally, I like walking and running. Yeah. Because I can, it's a form of meditation for me. Yeah. You like I'll, the running, all those like abuse on your knees and yeah, your joint. You're still, dude, you're okay with it? I, I am... Give me all that abuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how to offset it though. And take yeah, a little bit, yeah. a little bit. But it, like the mental part of it is you're out in nature. You're yeah. breathing. Well, fresh air normally. No, yeah. Not last week. <laughs> Not last week. The, the Nor smoke is cleared now. Yes. We have clean, beautiful air in Portland normally. Yeah. And so you're outside, you're breathing, you're in the moment. You're not thinking about what you're going to do after your run. You're not thinking about what happened yesterday. You're not thinking about work. You're not doing anything. All you're doing is I am here right now. And that's a form of meditation. Yeah. And it's really, really helpful for the mental part also. I will say I'm not a huge fan of running, but when I do <laughs> go running now, I stopped listening to music. Mm -hmm. I just like, and I didn't know that I even could, could do this. A friend mentioned that to me and he runs like, well, he's like a legit runner. Mm -hmm. He never runs with anything in his ears. And I'm like, really and i did it enough few times and i was like you know what 
I had some good ideas during it. I was mm-hmm. like, I was able to think through some things. I was like, oh, this is surprising. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of get into that rhythmic boom, 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 yeah. boom. And then your body kind of tunes it out. Yeah. That was good. And so you could just, you you could think better. So what did it, so those are things you're, you're currently kind of thinking about now as far as self-care goes. I'm guessing you haven't always been able to show oh. up quite so consistently. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, no. <laughs> And so I'm most interested in the moment from when you go from like being bad to being good, quote unquote. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's it's not maybe the best to like have these like judgment terms around it, but like not taking care of yourself to taking care of yourself. Like usually I go through these cycles, especially with food where I eat just junk (laughs) and eventually I start to feel really gross in my own skin and I start to just like, it's just like lethargic and then. Finally, the switch turns and I go like, I'm not going to eat like an idiot anymore Yeah, <laughs> until I do like, so yes. like, and it's but yeah. like, this is a pretty chronic thing for me, but like, what do you, what do you think about that? Like moment from like going from unhealthy, poor choice or no choices mm-hmm. to positive. So it, I'm just like you, the cycle wise, yeah. but there's a few examples that I like exactly like you're talking from the no choice. Usually in my case, it's the no choice Mm -hmm. to actually choosing to take care of myself. Mm. The first was the first time I went to a chiropractor. Mm. Uh, I was a college kid. And one of those things like randomly couldn't turn my head to the left. Mm. Just, you know, wake up with a kink. And, you know, 21 year olds like, eh, I'll get over it. (laughs) <laughs> you know, and I'm also broke. So what, yeah. what am I going to do about it? Right. And so by, I just chose not to turn my head to the left. And so everything I did, <laughs> and it was like bad, bad. Like I could go to straight ahead. I could go fully to the right, but nothing to the left. Like yeah. not even a couple. Now degrees. you probably have a good sense of what was happening. Yes, I yeah. do. Yeah. I, a joint in there was being pinched. Mm. It just I compressed. It couldn't go. It was stuck, restricted motion, you know? Yeah. And then because of that, the muscles all spasm, whatever. But it wasn't painful for me unless I tried to turn my head to the left, which was severe pain. So I just didn't turn my head to the left. Okay. You're just like, that's just off the table now. Yeah. I did that for like a year. Oh my gosh. And so the way I got around it is I sat on the left side of lecture halls so I could look to the right at the professor and never have to look to the left. That was my solution. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's a stupid 21 year old solution yeah, yeah and so first time i got my neck adjusted all of a sudden i could look to the left and i could see my left shoulder and here i am thinking why why did i wait so long yeah i'm never doing this again i am never ever going to just put my health off because i think i can just and eh, it's not that bad yeah there's so many other parts of your life uh, I'm so curious about. A, like a driving. year. Yeah. A year. <laughs> what was I? Th- what I know. I got really good at shoulder turning. Ch- you know? yeah. <laughs> Changing lanes for a year was something like really awkward. Oh, it was brutal. Yeah. Well, I was a that. So that year, I was mostly walking. Okay. On a yeah, like I was so poor. Yeah. Just like eating beans. <laughs> You're a college and student. Yeah, I had a lot of yeah. rice and a yeah. lot of top ramen <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but then this the second one that was a big changing moment for me was I was in chiropractic school and chiropractic school is 12 quarters long and uh, it's really rigorous, especially the first half is like a lot of basic sciences. And so quarter six uh, is right around the time where students usually take part one national boards and there's four parts of the boards, national boards. Okay. And so part one consists of six tests and it's like biochemistry and spinal anatomy and anatomy and neuroanatomy and all these like really difficult Intense, topics and yeah. stuff and we took those tests the weekend before finals and so within that seven day window i we took 21 doctorate level exams and i have never been more stressed in my life yeah like my eyelid was twitching for a long time and I was ready to quit. I was ready, like, I don't know if this is for me. This is, I've, like, I'm ready to not do this ever again. Mm. Like, I don't think I could open another textbook. This is, I'm done. Wow. And I was walking down the hallway of school and I saw this thing, like, pinned up on one of those cork boards. It says, Are you stressed? 
And uh, I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the cork board? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am stressed. It's like, you should come to our stress meeting uh, after, sc- after school on Thursdays at 7 p.m. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up for myself, right? There you go. So I did. I showed up. And it should have been called How to Meditate 101. Ah. And we it was 10 weeks long, and we just learned different ways to meditate. Some of them were like that mindfulness walking, like mm-hmm. that, you know, running and being outside. That's mm-hmm. mindfulness walking. Um, some of them were weird, like mindfulness coloring book. Oh. Yeah, My, just, they're just different giving, stuff. Yeah. But like learning how to meditate and learning really what it's all about helped me de-stress. Yeah. Oh, and another thing which was interesting is six quarters in, I started this. And so there, the program I went to was 10 weeks of lecture, one week of finals, and then you had two weeks of break and then repeat. Okay. And so ev- like clockwork, at the end of 11th week, I would get sick. Hmm. Like clockwork, six times in a row. Wow. Quarter one, two, three, four, five, six. Like your body was just like, Bleh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a it's a cortisol release. Yeah. When you are stressed, there's heightened levels of cortisol. When it drops, your body just lets go. It's like you're almost being held up by like a stack of cards, and mm. you pull that card out, and everything collapses. And mm. so I'd be sick for a week. I'd have one week of vacation, and then right back to it. Wow. And and uh, after I started meditating, I haven't been sick. Hmm. And that's, that's amazing. That's does mindfulness it. remain a practice for you? It does. Yeah. And what form does it take now? I still meditate. I try to do the like the, sitting. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm a bad meditator. And so I well, I have to listen. I have to put something in my ears. Yeah. Like I like the Sam Harris app, the waking up app. Yes. Yeah. It's stuff like that. Yeah. Where they're guiding you like yeah. breathe in, think about blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I love that. But there's it's it's gotten easier for me. I saw this. Um, it's probably pretty insensitive. I think he's a Buddhist monk. You know, the guy who wears like the yellow sash. Yeah. He was talking, uh, it was a YouTube video talking about how to meditate. He's like, people think it's so hard. Like you have to get in a dark room and, you know, sit cross-legged and try yeah. to do nothing. And it's really hard to do nothing. It's really hard to think about nothing. Yeah. But he's he's like, think about it this way. You have a monkey in your brain. And you have to give the monkey something to do. You, and so, uh, and a really easy thing to give the monkey something to do is feel your breath. And mm. so you focus, you breathe through your nose, and you feel the breath going over your upper lip, and you just feel it going in your nostrils, feeling your body going out your nostrils, and all you're doing is focusing on what it feels like to breathe. Yeah, you're giving that monkey something to do, and suddenly meditation's really easy. That's cool. When you're trying to like think about nothing, your mind's like, at least my mind is like, okay, here we go. Think about nothing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Stop <laughs> thinking. Well, thinking about nothing means I'm thinking. So stop, right, stop yeah. thinking. Okay. <laughs> uh, stop thinking. Okay. Well, what am I going to do to work today? Don't no, stop, 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 yeah. stop. And it just goes like that forever. I like, the, more. I like the, the style where it's like you're focused on something like the breath mm-hmm. and then inevitably you're you find yourself thinking about the, the the kids or the homework or the job or the whatever and then you go like oh i'm i'm not thinking about my breath bring it back yep, exactly. that's the style i like yeah and yeah it's always it's yeah. the monkey you're just trying to give the monkey something to do yeah and the, the nice thing about like thinking about it that way is that you can now meditate it doesn't matter you don't need to be in the quiet room no. on the pillow you can me- meditate in line at the dmv like exactly yeah exactly and that's helped a lot because I've, I've learned about myself as I'm a very highly functioning stressaholic. Mm. And my eye starts twitching when I get to the eights and nines on that stress. F10 is the worst. When I'm in an eight and nine, my eye starts twitching without a doubt. Yeah. But if I can live in like the fives and sixes, I am I do really well. That's cool. I don't know if I, a zero exists for me. Yeah. But, uh, but fives and sixes, like I'm happy, I'm functional, I get a lot done. But that, you know, it's it's a mental health game. Yeah. So those were the the, the introduction of mindfulness for you and your first uh, adjustment. Those were so, some big sort of life-pivoting uh-huh. moments. Uh-huh. What about in like 
day to day. Maybe this doesn't happen to you so much anymore. It happens to me so regularly. It's somewhat embarrassing <laughs> where I basically fall off the quote unquote wagon. You know, like, yeah. I'm just like, I have this, this list of, of, of positive habits, things that work for me, things that make me feel good, things that set me up for success just basically in every category of life. Mm-hmm. And like, even right now, I'm maybe doing one, maybe two of them, arguably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like those moments in your day-to-day life when you need to turn the corner and and get those things back lined up. Do you, do you have any ideas about like, I'm how interested to, in how to turn the corner. How to turn the I'm corner. Tr- I'm interested in trying to <laughs> short circuit. Like, so take, take nutrition, for example, yeah. where I've jumped off the, a cliff in the last two weeks. Just like, eating whatever honestly like being very not that thoughtful about it if i could do that for a day and flip the switch again instead of three weeks Mm -hmm. where i have to go through the whole process of feeling gross and like Mm -hmm. finally convincing myself like that i don't know does that any that make sense it does yeah and i don't know the answer yeah like that's a hard one i think that one's got to be really personal it is yeah well and it's so hard because it you're basically like trying to find motivation where sometimes there is none. And, and for me, it's almost always a mental health thing. Mm. And so if I, if, if I am getting overly stressed or overly exhausted or whatever, I make bad choices. Mm. It's almost like my bad choices lead to more bad choices. Yes. And I think in the opposite way, good choices lead to good, more good choices. Yeah. And so it's like if you can start by making easy choices like the right. sleeping or waking up or meditating or starting your day with exercise or something that's really easy for you and congratulating yourself for that. Like mm-hmm. making a uh, – like there was a time where I, when I was running half marathons where sometimes it was really difficult to like, I don't really want to run 10 miles today. Yeah. Like that sucks. <laughs> and so what you do is after you do something like that, you give yourself a treat. And so my treat was this like electrolyte drink that was really yummy. Mm. And so like I only drink that electrolyte drink after a long hard run that I didn't want to do. Mm. And so it was like this weird tricking my brain into yeah. getting a treat the, for the, something. The carrot you had to dangle. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's weird. It's not like I would want to run a half marathon so I could drink that drink. Yeah. But But you also picked a healthy reward. Yes. I know. Yes. yes. So but you can pick an unhealthy reward if it's in moderation. Right. So you know if like I'm gonna run ten miles to salt and straw. Exactly. You know, <laughs> something. Yeah. It's not like you're eating salt and straw every day. Yeah. I mean but I do live pretty close. So if you <laughs> if you're outside of Portland, that's a really popular ice cream place. It is yeah. the best the, ice cream. The best. I <laughs> yeah. would argue that too. I would argue it's yeah. the, the best. But yeah. it, it's, um, yeah, I think rewarding yourself. And sometimes the reward can be like, it doesn't have to be a th- tangible thing. You could say, you could s- audibly say, awesome job. Okay. Yeah. You know, like you did good today. or And know that you earned it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. But it's something to congratulate yourself when you make a good choice and it kind of leads to better, yeah. more more often making good choices. All right. Well, it sounds like we both need to continue yeah. to explore ways in which to short circuit the, the bad behaviors. <laughs> it's it's but, the human nature. Right yeah. There. <laughs> so th- uh, this is, I'm just always so curious when I have other uh, healthcare providers on because I feel like you are probably super experienced in this particular problem and that is advising other people Mm. to show up for themselves Mm -hmm. now i i love chiropractic care i've i get it regularly myself i maybe yeah first just comment on this like i don't know if it's a stigma or just a misunderstanding i feel like a lot of people don't get from my experience they don't seem to get chiropractic like i work on people i suggest it regularly people are either like Oh yeah, I get it all the time. Or like, oh, I had it once and it was like, yeah, it didn't work. And I'm like, you tried one time. Like, I know. Maybe it was just not the right person for you. Exactly. Or there's this other sort of pernicious concept that like, once you start, that's how they get you. Oh, I know. What's all that about? Well, once you brush your teeth, you got to do it every single time. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible thing. Yeah. <laughs> 
it it's taking it's that preventative care stuff yeah but there is a a place for injury-based chiropractic care and injury injury-based massage therapy sure you know and and that world exists and so sometimes well every time i will ask the patient when they come in like okay well what are your goals because mm. really what i'm there for is to help them achieve their goals sometimes their goal is i don't want to hurt anymore okay well after that anything they're like no i just want to be out of pain okay well if your goal is to be out of pain we won't see each other very often because i'm going to get you out of pain real fast yeah um but if your goal is to stay out of pain or I want to move better or I want to exercise better or I want to not have any sort of stiffness holding me back or this weird discomfort I feel after I work a long day. I wish I didn't feel that mm. weird stuff. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but whatever their goals are, you kind of meet them at their goal. Mm -hmm. So I have a patient who bodybuilds, uh, you know, oils up and shows off on stage. He's a big dude. Sure. Um, he sees us weekly mm -hmm. for shoulder mobility and lower back mobility. And uh, it's kind of funny, like I'm all, I care about his range of motion and I care about his, you know, alignment and impingement of shoulders and, mm -hmm. you know, the weird thing going down his leg. Like, that's what I care about. But he's like, yeah, you know, when I come here, I feel like I can get a better pump. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but that's, you know, it's so we're, we're helping him meet his goals of getting a better, deeper range of motion workout. Yeah. So once and a then, week. Which is probably why he feels that way. Exactly. Yeah. So like once a week is like, that's what he wants. Yeah. Uh, but for someone who's like working at an office desk, they might not need once a week. Yeah. And so you kind of meet them where they are. What, yeah. what do they need? So, okay, so that's just like, that's a great approach. I, I appreciate that. I do I do feel like, I mean, this is true of any industry where there's some people who are just like, let's try and get these, convince people to get more appointments than they need. You know, uh -huh. there's always going to be that in, in yeah. some level yeah. of bad actors, essentially. Oh, yeah, every. But what I'm more curious about is when you're working with someone, whether it's injury or just wellness, and you're inevitably going to give them some tactics, tips, mm -hmm. you know, things you would like to see them do to help themselves along the way mm -hmm. because you can't do all the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. How do you convince them to participate? So there is no convincing. Okay. That's, that is just something you got to learn. So there's, there's a, I don't remember the exact name of what this is, but there's a hierarchy of needs. Oh, the Maslow's. That, exactly. Yeah. The big pyramid looking thing. Yeah. And everybody, like it's different for everybody. Yours is different than mine. But the specific needs. The specific yeah. needs. And like the top five are what the people really care about the most. Like those top five usually don't change. And it might be something like family, money, self-care whatever like th th these things don't don't change like it's really hard for those to change and so if self-care isn't on that top part of their needs and wants and mm -hmm. desires that's a personality thing i don't think you can put it there for them right and so there's some people who won't ever care and you just got to be okay with that oh and just yeah like there's no you just got to do what you can do yeah. and just because you and I know the value of taking care of yourself. Yeah. And we value taking care of ourselves because we, we've we already talked about how, like, how can we better take care of ourselves? We yeah. both know we should take care of ourselves better. Yes. It's it's probably in the top five for me and you. Sure. And whether or not we actually follow through, but that's another story. Yeah. yeah. But it's, you know, you know what I mean? Like that, that's just it's, one of our character values. Yeah. So some people it's not in the top five. Some people it's not in the top 10. Some people, it's not in the top 15. And so yeah. you it's hard to make it there for them. They can make that change, you know, but it might... Like if you asked me when I was 20 years old, self-care, probably self-what? Yeah. You First, you would have turned... You would have slowly turned yeah. your entire body to the I left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what is self-care? I know. So it, it's... 
but it, you know, over time that has become important to me. Yeah. And so it, it, that can change, but the only person who can change it is me. Yeah. And so for each individual, the only person who can change that is them. Yeah. But for the people who it's already on that list, what you can do is, you know, just remind them. It's a, it's a big reminder. And you could talk about how, like most people care what it's going to do for them. Right. This will help you play with your kids. This will help you sit at a desk and not feel your leg go numb. I see. This Trying to help them find a why uh-huh. that resonates more than just f- foam roll every day for 20 yeah. minutes. Do Yes. yes. Do, do this so my job will be easier next time. They're going to be like, well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but if you're like, do this and you won't have that nagging pain by the end of the day. Oh, I'll, yeah, of course I'll do that. And, yeah. and that's kind of where it goes. Yeah. I'll work on people's hips and IT bands and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, I'll, and I'll, you know, casually ask them, do you ever foam roll? And it's always like, oh, I know I should. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, you don't have to be that hard on yourself. Yeah. But I was just, I don't, I don't actually have that much success with convincing people to, maybe that's just it. Just to stop trying to convince people to do, do like when I guess, to back up a little bit, like when I first got into massage therapy, I would I was coming out like of the gate hard. Like pe- people would come onto my table, and I'd be like, "Here's five things. Yeah, you're gonna do these five <laughs> stretches. This one." And they'd come back, and they would do nothing. Yeah, and I'd be like, "All right, well, okay. Here's three. They'd come back, and they do nothing. So yeah, I'd be like I know you're not gonna do anything. Yeah, but if you could do one thing, then I'd give them one thing, and guess what? They still wouldn't do it. Yeah. So I, and then I've I've talked to other therapists about this. And they, they just like, they threw it all out. They're like, I'm only, ex- I only accept they vet people now. Oh, if you're going to do your homework. Yeah. They, cause like certain therapists do like sort of a higher level of, I, I do a lot of like very calming relaxation mm-hmm. type stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm not actually giving out that much homework as it were, but some therapists do, you know, you got Rolfers and mm-hmm. yeah, all, all sorts of different modalities. And they are just like, I'm not working with someone who's, not going to participate yeah like and they're those are usually like higher cost involved mm-hmm. and more involved like multiple visits and like they're like what's the point like they're after yeah. the result they they want their 100 you know, success rate yeah and that's that's literally how you're going to get 100 percent success rate if the patient in, is involved in their care yeah it's more active than passive so but so for a, a small tip yeah. If you want someone to do your exercise. Okay. Have a handout. Okay. Like something that they could take home. But that handout, if you just hand it to them, they're going to put it on the seat of their car. It's eventually going to end up on the floor of their car. It's going to get stepped on and then eventually thrown away. Yes. If you hand it to them and have a highlighter in your hand. Okay. <laughs> this works, I swear. <laughs> a re- either a red Sharpie, a red pen, or a highlighter. And you say... This is what I want. And you circle the part. Like, it's really important that you do three times. You know, you hold it for 30 seconds. You highlight that part. The fact that they watched you highlight it. Interesting. Makes it for them. You hand it to them. And they're going to be like, oh, geez. And that's that's probably going to end up this somewhere sounds, important. This is, some, like, this is some, like, Jedi mind trick oh, yeah. stuff, right? Oh, there. yeah. 100%. You'd be like, this is the stretch you're looking for. I know. <laughs> this, is the, <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> I know. It's, it's weird, but we all do it. Like, if... If your if your massage therapist um, hands you something and it's like oh well, this is just copy pasted looks like clip art all right I'm gonna throw this away. I was thinking of what if you you got on someone's massage table and you had, during the session you they talk to you about like uh, doing a pigeon pose and then and then like two hours after your appointment was over, you got a video and I was like me saying like, Hey Chris, remember how we talked about the pigeon pose? Here's me doing it. That'd be awesome. Remind you like that. I think that would be, that would be above and beyond. Yeah. hundred percent. But then it's like, I'm going to make the video and send it. And like, when am I going to make my TikTok? Uh (laughs) Yeah. 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 But that would, that's an awesome, like that's a, I like that as an idea, but Uh will I be able to follow through on that idea? I I have considered making an app. Oh, cool. Called like, remind me or yeah. something. And you put in your exercises to do burger stretch or do pigeon pose or whatever. And it's in the app to say like, okay, once a day at blank time, it's going to go bloop, bloop, bloop. 
Yeah, it's going to oh, ping re- you. Yeah. Hey, don't forget to do your pigeon pose. And then it shows a picture of someone doing a pigeon pose. Okay. But, it, I, you know, I... That's a cool idea. W- when am I going to make that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just blasting this idea. Everyone's going to steal that idea. If someone does, credit oh, me, I please. Mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we just need it. We need it in the world. There is not an app I have checked. There's that, not. that does it quite like that? Because uh-huh. there are other like app, like motivational... Um, yeah. Yeah. Like uh, to-do like, lists. And... Well, to, but also habit stacking. Uh-huh. There's like, you know, where you, you create your list of habits that you want to have. And uh-huh. I, I theoretically use one. I have one. I never open it. Yeah. <laughs> it kept, it would ping me and I turned off the pings. <laughs> like there's still a little bit of like 100%. A, a buy-in involved. Yeah. I feel them. like for an app like that, you would need to ask. It would actually be higher success rate for people if it wasn't a one-time purchase. Yeah, because if you spend four ninety nine on it, you'd be like, "Well, that was a four ninety nine loss." Mm-hmm. But if you charged four ninety nine every month for it, you'd be like, "I pay for this every month. I got to do this." Yeah, maybe psychologically, I don't know. I like this idea. This I not, don't know. This is not bad. Oh, so, okay. So, um, okay. Before we talk, we're gonna talk more about TikTok. But mm-hmm. talk to me about this is a specialty th- um, piece of your practice that I am unfamiliar with beyond your TikToks. Okay. And YouTube videos explaining it. And this is the Atlas Orthogonal Upper Cervical Therapy in which you were board certified. I am. So this is a kind of a cool looking machine. Mm-hmm. So just talk to me about this. Is this something everyone needs? Is this very specific? Very or? specific. Okay. The, there are chiropractors who think everybody needs it. But... I will say when I watched the video, I, I was like... I think I need that. Yeah. I don't probably need it, but well, I just, I want to experience it anyway. But like, anyway, it's, it's different. Like the, it's much different than any other chiropractic adjustment you've probably ever had. Sure. It's very helpful for people who've had head injuries, like concussions, but also people who have like very upper neck stuff, like right at the base of their skull, mm. chronic headaches, especially if chiro- like traditional chiropractic isn't helping or massage therapy isn't helping Mm. you might have a problem okay but it's um a very precise we take x-rays we analyze where your c1 is in relation to your skull and your lower neck and the atlas being c1 okay Uh uh-huh so c1 and the atlas it's kind of like your shin bone or your tibia it's the same bone gotcha just one is the nickname and one is the medical name so you're adjusting the way that c1 fits with your skull Uh uh-huh okay sometimes because c1 is a really weird bone it it's not like any of the other vertebrae in your body Mm. all the other vertebrae have a disc that sits in between the above and below okay c1 does not um, the only thing that's really holding that's what, like physiological, we're transitioning from skull to spine. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It has to be different. Yeah, it has to be. And so there, the only thing really holding C1 in place is ligaments and muscles. Mm. And so sometimes if something happens, especially like a blow to the head, like it could be a whiplash or it could be like a soccer ball to the face or whatever. I'm assuming boxers need to get this kind of adjustment oh regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez Louise. <laughs> I've had some box, like, especially like, Oh yeah, they really rung my bell. Mm, there's probably oh something going on. Yeah. You know, sometimes they get hit and their neck's so thick. It's not a big deal. But when they're like, like, yeah, I've been dizzy for a month. Mm-hmm, I bet oh, your boy. C1's off. Okay. I bet your C1's off. And so you, we take x-rays, we analyze it, it uh, we do a bunch of math with it, we, it gives us some vectors, so we adjust it um, based on the x-rays into a specific way. We take an x-ray afterwards to make sure it went where we wanted it. Mm. If it did, we're all good. Nice. And usually people have... And you're, me- you're moving at millimeters, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Like a big movement would be like five or, five or ten millimeters. Wow. Like the that's real big okay so it's small stuff and small stuff big machine yeah i know that machine everybody (laughs) comments like man this looks like a scary (laughs) but it's it's probably one of the most gentle adjustments you ever get most people sit up and like did it happen yet like yeah Yeah. it already did it's only six pounds of force it looks a lot of it looks scary though right (laughs) but it's yeah, it helps a lot of people. That's cool. About fifty percent of my practice is based off of that. And is that that's because you you're specialized in that, and people seek yes. it out from you. Exactly. Yeah. When I first started, I wasn't 
planning on being so entrenched in upper cervical care, Mm -hmm. but there's really a a lack of it in Portland. Oh. And so we, you know, people need it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you help one person with their chronic migraines, they're going to tell all of their friends. Like there's a lot of people who have dizziness. There's another, uh, syndrome called Meniere's disease. Yeah. Where the people are dizzy, they have headaches, they have ringing in their ears, mm. and it's very highly tied into where C1 is. Hmm. And so they get this this adjustment and they start feeling better. Well, they're going to tell all their friends and they're going to tell all of the people who, who's in their Facebook support group. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just, the word spreads like wildfire and we're the only people in Portland who do it. Yeah. And so it's just, um, it's without even trying that part of my practice is just blown up. That's cool. Okay. So a little sidebar, cause you mentioned the word, um, beyond getting an Atlas orthogonal upper cervical therapeutic adjustment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say to someone who has migraines? What, what interventions do you like just in terms of like dealing with the present heavy moment of a migraine? You have to find, Oh, like during the migraine? Yes. Uh, caffeine, go sit in a dark room, put some earplugs in, Okay. go to bed. Okay. It's yeah. just like you need to like... Yeah, take some Exed- Excedrin migraine. It's just heavy duty you gotta get aspirin through it. With, a, with some caffeine. Yeah. But like coffee has caffeine. So drink some coffee, go to bed. What's Why is the caffeine? Because it's... the the Well, a lot of migraine stuff we don't know. I uh, gotcha. But the... Current theory on why caffeine helps is maybe a vasodilation of okay. the blood vessels going to your brain. So s- s- one of the theories of why a migraine happens is blood vessels constrict or blood vessels dilate. We don't know. <laughs> and the, because it's a different for every person. It's really weird. Right. So the caffeine kind of changes it and mm. often it's in a better way. Okay. Yep. Weird. Yeah. But the when someone comes in with a migraine, there's so many different types of migraines and so many different triggers Very personal, for migraines. Yeah. It's first you have to find out why they are having migraines. Mm-hmm. The ones that are hardest for me to treat are hormonal migraines. Mm. Every month I get these. It just comes with my cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, those are hard. I hate those ones because I, I, I can't you, fix them. Right. But other ones you could find out the trigger. And either remove the trigger, but there is a lot of uh, ones that the trigger is a tension type headache. So okay. it starts in the neck, starts in the base of the head. It gets bad enough and then now it's a migraine. Mm. And that's a really common one for a lot of people. Hmm. And if you can stop the, the, the trigger, you can stop the migraines. Yeah. And so a lot of it is... Upper neck stuff, C1, C2, mm-hmm. occiput, the base of your skull, um, addressing all the muscles around it, all the muscles that attach there. Yeah. And then um, making sure those bones are moving and aligned well. And cool. a lot of times migraines magically disappear. Hmm. All right then. Okay, so now TikTok. TikTok. Why t- why TikTok? <laughs> what 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 uh, inspired you to to jump into that and talk so, to me a little bit about your growth and Yes. Yeah. So I am I am always about uh being everywhere. Sure. I, every social media I try to be on it. Yeah. And TikTok was new to me. Um and I was like, "Oh, well, it's not really an app I've ever heard of or interested in." Mm-hmm. But I saw another chiropractor who she's on YouTube. Um she was on TikTok. I was okay. Like, oh, interesting. So I went there and I searched chiropractors. And at that point, there was four chiropractors on TikTok. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I could be number five. So I joined TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't know what to post. And so I just started posting things. And they were, it, I, I liked it because you could edit it within the app. Mm-hmm. I was also able to repost it to Instagram, which made it very easy. Yeah. And then it, Instagram reposted to Facebook. And so it's kind of this all in one marketing. Yeah, like, you all right. create one thing and it yeah. helps you. Yeah. Yeah. And I am all about content marketing. Sure. So content marketing is basically I put out good, uh, informative things, whether it's blog posts or videos or whatever. Yeah. So your, your, your style is very educational. It's very, yes. it's, for, it's usually pretty light. It's yes, fun. Exactly. Yeah, we get a sense of your personality. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
And so it's that's content marketing. I'm mm-hmm. putting out things that people find value in for free. Yeah. And um it's just it's just a type of marketing. Do you is that your primary? It for is for your practice? It is. Do you, do, you even, do you even spend any ads anywhere else? I or? don't spend money on anything. Yeah. Smart. Um the um but content marketing, whether it's blogs or videos or whatever, always works. And so I was like, I'm just gonna use that for TikTok. So I started, you know, making videos about things. And the the one that got went, that went super viral, mm-hmm. uh, my aunt said, "Hey, like, is there anything to do for like the hump that forms behind your the top of your back, mm-hmm. and, like when you have pain between your shoulder blades?" It's like, yeah, I'll just I'll make a real quick video for her. Mm-hmm. So I handed the phone to my wife. She works in the office with me. Mm-hmm. I said, I "Just film me." And she's like, "What are you gonna do?" I'm like, I don't know. I just just press record. And so I showed her Bruder stretch, shoulders back, shoulders down, double chin, do this. This will help the pain. Be- and I'm, I'm literally talking to my aunt. Do mm-hmm. this. The pain will help between your shoulder blades. Give it a try and tell me how it goes. And I put it on Instagram. It did okay. On TikTok, it got over a million views. Yeah. And it turns out a lot of people on TikTok hunch over their phone and they all have yeah. that pain. Yeah. So I kind of hit on it for something very close to home for a lot of people mm-hmm. and that kind of bl- blew up and that probably g- grew your following yeah quickly yeah yeah and and it's kind of been this exponential curve where it took a long time to hit a hundred thousand mm-hmm. um, I remember I hit a hundred thousand um, it was in 2020 so it you know it it took but I mean, I that's know, five, like what? Five, that's five October or, to five or six months or something. Yeah, that's not that long. But since since I hit a hundred thousand, like I'm already at three hundred thousand. Wow! And so it's like that's been crazy. Yeah. And are you are you pretty good about posting daily? No. Uh, I, or or I, were I, you during your big growth? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the mistake I've been making. I, yeah. I'm not showing up consistently enough. Yeah. But even so, like every time I log in, twenty more followers. Yeah. Twenty more. And yeah. when I post something that re- resonates, it'll like obviously it'll spike. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've really enjoyed and your it, your TikTok. Posts. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Overall, it's it feels very positive. Mm-hmm. Like good en- for me anyway. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe it'll change. You know, when more as it gets more popular. Good energy there. Mm-hmm. Positivity. Mm-hmm. And. I guess like my most popular video, I, I have this little thing about where I talk about how how much of your clothes you should take off. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Getting a massage. That I've one seen, got that, that one had a million views. Ooh, nice. And, but it also generated a lot of like um, comments that I probably would have should have predicted uh-huh. about like, you know, happy endings and yes. massage therapy. Yeah. So now I need to like, I'm still wrapping my head around how to like make a video to respond to that because that's sort of a an annoying yes thing that comes up for massage therapists and it's actually a a pretty serious issue so but any, anyway all that to say like yeah well yeah. so you even though i had those like kind of like gross comments there were still like a lot of people who were just genuinely curious about you know they've never had massage before cuz they've been nervous to take off their clothes or they they they're you know, overweight and they're feel, they feel like they're going to be judged or they have like some sort of skin condition that they're like, and like these created like conversations mm-hmm. and like made me aware of. Well, think about yeah. how many people who you have touched to say, well, I'm going to try a massage now. Yeah. And you've, you've helped them overcome some weird fear or some irrational thought that they, you know, they just didn't know, mm-hmm. but now they know. And now they're going to try it, and now their life is going to be improved. Yeah, from some dumb little TikTok. Yeah, and that's happened with me a, a bunch. But what's funny, you say that as your million your million view TikTok mm-hmm. started getting the weird stuff. Mm-hmm. I hate it when I have a video get over a million views. Oh yeah, all the weirdos come out. The armchair warriors that think oh, they they're know. Like, they're like, once you crack, you can't go back. Like, oh yeah, all the like, anti chiropractic chiropractors are quacks. They don't know anything. Oh yeah, according to this weird article that some uh, some guy wrote, like you guys, I'm like oh my gosh, <laughs> like you guys are quoting what's what what we did back in the 1870s yeah but it's not even worth wading into no, that no like this is 2020 like comparing a chiropractor in 1980 to a chiropractor in in 2020 is not fair yeah 
like that's not fair like the yeah. the science and the education and the standards have changed all for the positive like we are accepted into the medical community yeah so anyways but yeah. it's like but these people literally have no idea but they only appear when you get those high views <laughs> it's right like, oh no yeah. <laughs> not these people again <laughs> so has have has the tiktok like let has it actually brought people to your office locally oh yeah 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 that that's happened very little for me in fact my client that's coming in in about an hour and a half is found me on tiktok yeah yeah yep so maybe if I, that's the thing, I was like, I oh, see, I need to be more consistent. Then more Portlanders will actually find me. Uh huh. Yeah. But yeah. you you have found that to be the case. Oh, yeah. 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 We probably get uh, one a week from TikTok. We probably get two to five a week from YouTube. Do you do anything to target Portland or is it just part of the algorithm that they find you locally? I definitely, in my TikToks, hashtag Portland that's, every, every that's, time. Okay. Every uh -huh. time. Yeah. TikTok knows where we all are right they're they're geotagging our phones all the time sure um and so if you tag where you are then the people around you like it's not going to be just portland right but you'll probably get most of your views from the greater portland area you know maybe all the way up to seattle all okay. the way down to san francisco right but it's um you know gonna you know but i don't really care like yeah like it Say so, you know it's it's fun to talk about stuff and answer questions and things. And like people that. send you videos directly; they tag you, and then you respond to those sometimes. That's mm -hmm. I like those too. Mm -hmm. Has it led to any other like unexpected benefits or? Uh, yeah. Did did you do some podcasts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, though. Yeah. Not really. I mean, I guess I have had a few people send me free things. Okay. A pillow, some shoes, a laser. And they're like, "Yeah, hey, can you do a TikTok with this?" I'm like, "All right." Without, with the expectation that you're like, "Okay, but I'm going to be honest." Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm not gonna like. So you know, you do an honest review and yeah, whatever. That's it's, okay. it's kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> it's just weird. Like I'll tell people, I think I have like thirty six thousand followers on TikTok. It's kind of like blows people's minds. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it doesn't really mean that much no yeah. tiktok followers you grow much faster like if you had thirty six thousand followers on instagram people, yeah you could probably make it a full-time job yeah people yeah. would pay you to post things yeah and same on youtube thirty six thousand youtube subscribers like man you're probably making a living off this yeah but tiktok it's it's uh but that's kind of the nature of tiktok it's, yeah it's fun it's fast it's not really taken so seriously yeah. But because of that, people are more likely to engage with you yeah, and create conversations and become a fan. And I have, it's really strange to me. I've met so many people that are, they're like, oh, you look just like you do in your TikToks. And it's almost like they're, they're like, I'm a star, <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> you know, like I make these 15 second videos about yeah. taking care of yourself, but they truly like they, they listen to you and, and. They're almost like the best patients because they really value what yeah. you have to offer. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. What a world. Grow your practice on TikTok. So, uh, well, thanks so much for being here. Yes. Talking about self-care. Yeah. This is great. I want to thank Dr. Chris Cooper for coming on the podcast today. You can find links to his Instagram and TikTok in the show notes. And you can find them on the web at eastportlandchiropractor.com. This episode is still presented as part of the self-care mission, but I've actually recently decided to fold everything back into my massage hodgepodge moniker. So there'll be more on that in the future, but for now you can find it in both places and there'll be updates soon. Thanks for listening. And remember to drink lots of water, drop your shoulders, and continue to try to take the best care of your own self. Thanks.